Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carl Voss. I'm the CEO of Hyox Orthopedics. And what is Hyox Orthopedics? Hyox Orthopedics is based on a transformative material innovation that we called Hyox Cartilage, which is an off-the-shelf, paradigm-shifting polymer that allows surgeons to resurface damaged joint surfaces at time zero with a polymer that works like, feels like, is a direct synthetic analog of healthy hyaline cartilage. Where we are today is we're avoiding the cost, the uncertainties, and the availabilities of these expensive biologic therapies, and we're ready to address multiple joint spaces with a scalable manufacturing that can go across the body. So let's take a, will, a quick look at the company today. We have two products in the pipeline. Our first product is a 510K into the high growth foot and ankle space, which is the first MTP. And we currently have a knee resurfacing product that is in full uh, IDE approval trials in the US as well as trials in the EU. I'll show you some data in a minute. We, all of this is protected by 17 issued patents that cover everything from our material, our chemical process, and our full construct. We have an amazing team of folks leading this company who have decades of experience in medical devices, orthopedics, and our most recent hire was Dr. Thomas Vail. He retired recently as the head of orthopedic surgery at University of California, San Francisco, and joined us as our CMO. So what is so amazing about this material? So let's talk about healthy hyaline cartilage. It's composed of two components, a structural component, which is type two collagen, and locked into that matrix is a hydrophilic tissue called protoglycans. So at rest, healthy hyaline cartilage is actively hydrating through synovial fluid. The mechanism of action is when you load hyaline cartilage, it exudes fluid that creates a fluid bearing and you get a very lubricious articular surface. When cartilage is damaged or it scars, you lose that interstitial water content, you lose that ability to self-lubricate. What our inventors at Stanford University did is they took two well-understood polymers, one that had very similar material properties to the type two collagen. They expanded that matrix through our proprietary chemistry, locked in a second hydrophilic polymer and have put a negative charge on that so it truly does function exactly like healthy hyaline cartilage. It pulls water into the matrix. When you compress the material, it exudes that interstitial water and lubricates just as healthy cartilage does. And you can see this video here of our scientists bending and manipulating the, the material and it does exactly do that, exude and reabsorb water into the matrix. We have both the material properties of healthy cartilage from a, an impedance stiffness and the coefficient of friction of our material on cartilage as that of healthy cartilage on cartilage. We make it in sheets so we can make this in, in significant amounts and then we can cut, shape, and build a number of implants. You see three of our knee SKUs here as well as our MTP device and then we can take this across the full body in a number of articular joints. So let's talk about the first indication which is the first metatarsal. So today, the standard of care for the first metal tarsal arthritis is to fuse the joint. While this alleviates the pain, the patients are very dissatisfied with this surgery in that they lose the range of motion. They're unable to do the things they used to do. And surgeons, I was at the American Orthopedic Foot and Ankle meeting last week. The number one unmet need is how do you treat this and maintain range of motion? Using the Hylix material, once again, we can resurface the damaged joint surface, we can maintain the natural anatomy in a straightforward four-step procedure. If you look at what we're doing, we're taking a polymer designed to both take a press, designed to be fitted to porous titanium for both a press fit and a osteo-integrated approach to fix into the toe. Once again, a four-step procedure, we resurface it. This is a 510K approach into a $700 million US market, equally OUS, We'll file that 510K before the end of this year, and you can see here what a metatarsal looks like when it's resurfaced with Hylix. We preserve the anatomy, we resurface the joint, maintain the biomechanics of the joint. Our second indication is looking at the multi-billion dollar knee market. And once again, this is data that's publicly available from the US where we talk about 1.2 million arthroscopic procedures. LSI presented there's about 6 million globally, annually. And there's about 750,000 cartilage lesions that are diagnosed in the operating room. About 585,000 of those are grade two, grade four, which surgeons believe they would treat. The miss here is a straightforward, off-the-shelf, guaranteed resurfacing that restores the natural anatomy, restores the biomechanics of the joint, and let these patients get back. But if you take a further cut at the market, it becomes more interesting. So there are biologic approaches. They're expensive. They're difficult to get to. But really, when you look at patient biology, and the literature will tell you once a patient is over 35 years old, they really start to lose the ability to regenerate. So if you look at the gold standard, which is Macy by Vericell, their market is limited by their ability to get reimbursed by patient age, patient bi biology. If you look at once you're over 65, you've got end-stage osteoarthritis, it's time to do a total joint replacement. 
those patients do very well. Patients 67 and older have complete satisfaction. So what do you do with someone 35 to 65 years old that has acute cartilage injury? Right now, what the surgeons tell them is deal with the pain, modify their activity, and wait until they're ready for a total joint replacement. It's not what we want. And what these patients want is they want immediate, immediate reduction of pain and a return to activity, a return to life, if you will. And so that's what we can do with our material. And so you see here today, we've got 13 patients in. We're treating the widest range. And I'll talk through two cases real quick. This is a 49-year-old skier. She was skiing, a lateral meniscus tear. There was a cartilage signal on MRI during the scope. You see the second panel. This is a 18 millimeter full thickness lesion in a 49-year-old woman. This lesion probably would have been debrided and she probably would have been indicated for a unique compartment uh, knee replacement or a total knee replacement when she was ready to give up. Instead, in a 15-minute procedure, we resurfaced the joint. You can see the implant there. Um, she's doing extremely well a number of months out. The second is this is a failed uh, microfracture with an adjunct where they microfractured, they put in a scaffold, and you see here that you have this three-dimensional scar tissue that is formed into the joint. Very painful, limited range of motion. The surgeon was able to open this joint, debride that cartilage scar, remove the damaged bone because microfracture does create a sclerotic bone wear, and they used one of our deep 12-millimeter implants, so at the same time they treated the surface lesion of the joint and the bony lesion that was about eight millimeters deep in this patient. So what are we doing today in our trial? We're treating those cartilage gap weakened warriors. We're treating both surface and bony lesions, bony edemas. We're treating semi uni compartment arthritis. It's early stage. The rest of the knee's good. Why would you do a total knee replacement when you could just replace that one compartment? And we're actually seeing revisions of failed treatments. The patients are doing exceptionally well. Coos score, uh, mean Coos is what um, the FDA really likes to see. Our patients at six months are seeing a 30 point average. If you look at the the standard of care, microfracture debridement, they're looking at 20 point improvement over two years, 30 points at six months, it's very compelling. And then our subscales that we track of pain, acti activities of daily living, and quality of life all far exceed the clinically important difference at six months. So if you look at the technology that's available today, really when you have to treat the widest range of lesions, the depths of lesions, both surface and bony involvement down to 12 millimeters, restore the biomechanics of the joint, restore the articular surface at time zero in a straightforward 15-minute procedure, and something that's off the shelf, it's a four-step procedure. We built the manufacturing process to scale once again. We produced the cartilage sheets in mass. We cut, we shaped, we affixed a porous titanium or other substrates to address joint pathologies, and we're able to take this technology across the, the full body. So today, first indication is MTP. 510K will be filed here in a few weeks. It'll be on market 2025. We have the full IDE study running in the U.S. with the EU study running in the knee with very compelling early data, and we're already thinking about where that next joint space is. Once we get the MTP done, we'll be on to the next indication. Near-term activities, obviously at 510K clearance commercialization of the MTP, we do have a, a U.S. Uh, safety review that will be completed in October and submitted to FDA, and then we'll roll up early next year, one year um, data on our um, IDE study. The IDE study does have a one-year endpoint, and we'll feel we continue to enroll that. So today, Hylix, we have a transformative material that is a direct synthetic analog of healthy hyaline cartilage, the same mechanism of action through interstitial water, and allows us to resurface these damaged joint surface and get these patients recovering back to activity quickly without the uncertainty of biological or other treatments. Thank you.